The first submerged floating tunnel has been constructed in the Froyets in Norway and that's one of the very important developments in transport geography and that's what we would focus today. Now submerged floating tunnels is FT are also known as the submerged floating tube bridges and they are based on the Archimedes principle. Now since they are based on the Archimedes principle, the idea is buoyancy. Very important thing is it cannot be very much below the sea level. The simple reason being because of the high pressure it would be difficult to actually survive for uh, human beings it, as simple as that. So this is relatively around 30 meters uh, deep. So that's an average depth that we talk about and it is supported by buoyancy. Now what happens is you have the force of buoyancy that lifts it up and on the other hand there is a force of gravity that pushes it down and therefore this tube remains suspended and submerged in the water. Now this can be in two ways either it could be attached to the seabed or it could actually float with the help of pontoons which are uh, basically the flat flat uh, structure like um, um, ships through which you have the submergence that can happen. Now either of these techniques could be used. If it is seabed, definitely it has to be a shallow depth. If it is pontoons, it could be at a relatively more depth. So that's the basic difference. Now since 1900s, there have been a concept of submerged um, tunnels, but this submerged floating tunnel is a unique concept. Now why this tunnel is unique? Firstly, as I said, either it could be attached to the seabed or through the pontoons which float onto the surface. Now, it is specifically useful in the areas where you have froids, uh, in the deep sea channels or in the areas of, uh, let's say, uh, deep lakes. Uh, this is a technique that can be actually very immensely useful. Also, while you are constructing it, uh, there has to be two different ways. One way for uh, the, the onward and the forward movement of the traffic. And uh, the technique has to be well developed so that there is a smooth flow. Definitely there are challenges and issues related to it. A maximum depth it can go is only 3.3 kilometers deep because pressure from 8 kilometers onwards is nearly 500 times the atmospheric pressure and as a result, as I mentioned before, it would not be a viable solution because of a high pressure zone that is created. Now, what is really important is the types of constructions across. So one is the suspension bridge as you can see in the diagram. So here you have a suspension bridge which is suspended onto the sea surface. Then the, the one marked in two is the submerged floating tube which is based on the Archimedes principle of buoyancy and therefore is also known as Archimedes bridge. The next one is a immersed tube. And the last one is an undersea tunnel. Right. So these are some of the important developments as we can see. Now, when we are talking about buoyancy, there could be a positive buoyancy as well as a negative buoyancy. How? The idea is very simple. When I talk about positive buoyancy, it is fixed by anchoring its legs. That means it is attached to the seabed or to the pontoons or to the surface and therefore it is only 30 meters below the sea level. So for positive buoyancy, it is 30 meters below the sea level. However, when we talk about negative buoyancy, this is attached or um, tied to the seabed only, not to the pontoons. And therefore the depth is limited to 100 meters below sea level. So that's again a difference. Now, what are the benefits of um, this suspension floating tunnel? The first is it can be constructed away from a densely populated area. It can provide a clear channel, faster movement of the traffic. Uh, the region must have access to an underground parking structure. And also, uh, once the lifespan is completed, it's easy to remove. But there are definite challenges in terms of cost, in terms of a fire outbreak in the tunnel. Uh, it's difficult to rescue because it's underwater. Uh, the next is uh, the discomfort for the, uh, for the passengers, if any, and 
also issues related to coalition if it happens within the undersea tunnel now as i mentioned the norway friots are an interesting study highway e uh, e39 is one of the major highways in norway and this highway is known for its unique beauty because through this highway it runs along the west coast of norway and cuts across various rivers waterfalls and provide a scenic overview now through this highway which is nearly 864 miles uh, the idea is this as of now can be covered in nearly 21 hours why because the seven intersections as you can see here which are marked with the do uh, dotted lines are the intersections where you have the freights and therefore you have to move into a ferry uh, and then move your vehicle out of the ferry and this whole process actually increases the time which makes it nearly 21 hours to cover this distance however with the tunnels being established and developed in the region this distance could be reduced to half now near the region of sojin fraud is the idea where the sustainable uh, submerged floating tube idea has been uh, provided and this would be a very unique thing because you can understand it's like a drinking straw as you can see here now this drinking straw is actually under the water and it is submerged where the passengers can actually move safely within this straw as simple as that and it is also a good way because even the largest ships can pass above it it won't touch the tunnel and even the submarines can move beneath it it won't hamper the tunnel so that's one of the important things that has been taken into mind while constructing this similarly ferry free zones have been created and there have been uh, planned tunnels which are even rock tunnels the tunnel which is totally beneath the uh, lake or the water body that runs is known as the rock tunnel so those rock tunnels are also seen and they are at a depth of nearly 1268 feet around 17 miles long again a unique feature this norway region itself has more than 1000 uh, 70 tunnels as of now of which 37 is underwater and more into development now this uh, submerged floating tube is really unique because after its construction it would be one of its kind and it's believed that 33 percent of the project would get completed by 2025 but still more years to take for the co complete completion of the um, tunnels across this pathway but this uh, submerged floating tube or submerged floating tunnel has created avenues for further development in transport geography reducing the distances reducing the time and also important for those studying civil engineering so thanks for joining in today we'll be covering other interesting topics soon stay tuned